1 Corinthians chapter 12. Appreciate your prayer. My voice will hold out. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to start reading with verse 12 and read uh, through the rest of that chapter. Verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God sent the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one body, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee, of you. And nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow a more abundant honor, and our uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness. Uh, for our common parts have no need, uh, uh, but God hath tempered the body together, having given much, uh, given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. For one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, uh, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Now that more excellent way is in chapter 13, uh, the love chapter, and uh, I'm just going to mention that only, and we're going to go back to verse 12. Amen? So the body, the body of Christ, it's easy enough to understand how these bodies work, and they function one another together, and they make up the one body. As you look up here, or as you look in the mirror from time to time, and you see your body, or I see my body, uh, I see it all as part of my body. And I don't recognize the hand a different or separate from the body. Don't recognize my head being separate from the body. Uh, the hand's part of my body. The head's part of my body. My feet are part of my body. So all these things being different members of the body are all one body. So is the church. Uh, we're all laborers together. We may have different laborings. We may have different functions. But we all function as part of the body. And so the visible church is one body. That's what he's trying to say. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members, verse 12, of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We identify with one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, now he's talking about the church of Jesus Christ. 
whether we be bond or free, still talking about the church of Jesus Christ, have all have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now that goes with the teachings in, in chapter 12 uh, from verse 1 up to verse 11. And so he's talking about there should be no schism, no separation, no division in the body because the body is one. They have different things that we do. Uh, we do all these things together as a body. Uh, some of them have more honor bestowed upon them. Uh, some of them don't have near, near as much honor bestowed upon them. Now take that and apply it to the church. Uh, there are some that have more honor because of the position or the work that they do. Musicians, singers, preachers, teachers, what have you, apostles, prophets, all these things that he mentioned there. Then there are other things that don't have such honor or glory attached to them and they're still just as necessary. They're still just as important. I was reading about a star athlete in the high school who uh, had uh, speed, had power, had strength and agility and in the uh, uh, summer months he went to work on a uh, lumber yard and he lost a big toe and he lost his, uh, his speed because of that, couldn't push off with that toe quite as quickly, lost some of his agility uh, because that digit was missing and he lost some of the power in his thrust uh, with all of that. And so he lost his uh, scholarships that were waiting on him and he had to go into something else. We may not realize how important our toes are, our big toe or our little toe or the ones in there, they're all there and uh, that God made them there, put them in the body as it pleases him and they all have a function. There may be a lot of big toes in the church, maybe a lot of little toes in the church, but whatever you are, toe, amen, ear, eye, your part is just as important as someone else's part. It may not seem that way. It may not feel that way. Sometimes the others get more honor, more respect, more dignity than you do or that others do, but we're all just as important as anyone else is. When we take a group picture of the church, it's not just my picture. I'm not the only one in the picture, but if we take a church picture, everybody in the church is included in that picture. Amen. Amen. And so you're getting the picture that we're all just as important as one another are. As numerous as they are, the parts of the body, as numerous as they are, they are, after all, one body. Now, I thought about that for a while this afternoon, and I begin to think about it. And so I wrote some things down that applies to it. And so we've got the head. Amen. we got the head. It's an important part of our body. Would you all agree with that? It's got the thing, the gray matter, that helps us to think. Helps us to make decisions. Helps us to do one thing and another. Helps us to speak. It helps us to be able to focus our eyes. It gives us the ability to hear. Our head has a mouth. A breath that it receives nutrition for the rest of the body. And so we take the head out of the picture. What happens to the rest of the the body. It dies. Amen. And so what's in the head? The eyes, the ears, the mouth, the tongue, the hair, the nose, the brain, the spinal cord, and a bonehead. Amen. Uh, that thing that, that keeps that brain, that gray matter protected. Alright, the torso. What's in the torso? Heart, lungs, liver, spleen. How many knows what the spleen does in the body? It's important or God wouldn't have put it in there. Uh, the kidneys, the bladder, the big and small intestine, the stomach, the ribs, the backbone, the muscles. Amen. Think about the arm, the bone, the muscles, the fingers, the thumb, the joints, the nails, the wrist, the elbow. All of these things work together to make up a body. I'm not going to go into the leg. You get my point. Amen. All of them work together to function to keep us going and to keep us from being able to see. Uh, so what would it be tonight if the uh, our parts of the body were going to say, I'm not going to play no more. I'm going to be a separate individual. Amen. What if our mouth was all of a sudden to say, I'm not going to chew no more. Uh, you just put it in there. Uh, sooner or later, it would go down and start to choke us. And so if the body stopped playing with our part, the mouth stopped playing with our body, uh, then we're going to choke. We're not going to go very far. What if the stomach was going to say, I'm not going to digest food anymore? Uh, soon that food would sit there. We'd soon get to a place where we'd die. And so the brain. What if the brain said, I'm not going to function to get the rest of the body going today. All I'm going to do is sit around and play video games. Amen. 
Can you imagine what a mess our bodies would be in? I know, we need to function together as one part, one body. Uh, so uh, those glorious parts of the body that God has given us are all designed by God. Look at verse 14. As the body uh, is not one member but many, if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, and not function as a foot, is it therefore not of the body? Actually, actually what it amounts to is it still part of the body. Amen. And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Amen. Now apply that spiritually to the members of the church. Uh, that I want to be this. I'm not that, but I want to be something else. But then we get into the verse, the next verse. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased Him. Don't get an attitude with God's design. Amen. Uh, God knows what He's doing, and that's the way that He placed us. The position that He gives us. And we need to be what? I mentioned this morning. Faithful in the job that God has given to us. There may be a couple of things uh, that the body does. Different members of the body does. The hand, uh, it can raise a fork or it can open a jar or it can shake somebody's hand. It can open a door. Amen. It's a great tool. Would you not agree? It's a great tool that God has given us of the hand. And He placed it in the body as He sees fit. And so He said, and it, as it pleased Him, and if they were all one member, where were the body? We can't all be hands. We can't all be feet. We can't all be head. But we can be what God gave us to be. Every part of the body is important or God would not have placed it there. Amen. Amen. And remember the church is important. Whether you're a preacher or a teacher or a prophet or an evangelist, a musician or a singer or a teacher or somebody that opens the door, somebody that greets people when they walk in or if you're somebody that does a lot of praying, regardless what you have been given by God, be faithful in it and the body will function as Christ intended for it to be. Amen. As we can understand that the body is one, we're all been baptized into one body, in one spirit, and we function together as a whole. When we function, that's easy enough to see in the body, but how does that play out in the church body? Amen? We can't do without one another. I love my family. I thank God for my family. I can't imagine one of them not being there. But here's the point I'd like to say. Amen. We need all the church. We need you here. We need you functioning. We need your part in the position that God has given you. In the Sunday school class. If you're just a student. In the class as a teacher. In the class as a preacher. Whatever that God has given you. Be faithful in those things. Don't get an attitude over any of the things that are part of the body that God has placed them in. A lot of them have more specific honor, or at least it would seem that way. But we look at the Word of God, and they're all very important. And our, our, our bodies are, are actually working together physically like God would have them to be. And when the church members are one body and functioning, as the Lord has given us to be, we're going to also be very efficient in what God has given us to do. And I thought about this a little bit further. I think about the feet. Our feet do an awful lot of good things for us. Amen. They keep this old rest of this mass up in the air so that we can go about and do the things that God would have us to do. Amen. Not only that, but I thank God for the backbone that helps us to stand erect. Helps us to be able to go about our duties. I thank God for our tail ends. Amen. We were able to get the feet red. If it wasn't for the way that God placed the body, we'd be always standing, always sitting, or always laying down. We're important. All of our parts are important to the mass that God has placed in this body. Amen. The hand, the feet, the legs are all part of the mass that makes up the body that God has placed in together. Let's go on a little bit further. Look at verse uh, at 22. Nay, that which more members of the body would seem to be more feeble are necessary.
necessary. And so those members of the body in the church, uh, they may not think that they've got much of a position. The Bible says, no, they are important. And verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncommon parts have more abundant confidence. And so part of that, the way that I read this, is that we uh, bestow more abundant honor, meaning that there are certain parts of our body uh, that are dressed up, that are clothed, and it brings a little bit of glory or uh, honor to them uh, because their position is that they're covered in the body. Then he says in verse 23, our, our uncommon parts, parts that don't need any clothing, like our head and our nose and our mouth and our chin, uh, those parts are, have more abundant commonness, not more honor necessarily, but more commonness, more giving. And for our commonly parts have no need of clothing, and God, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And so he's talking about there, God had tempered the body together. God has fashioned the body together. Whether it be a small church or a big church, or we all consider ourselves part of the big body of Christ. And I think that's the way uh, that the Apostle Paul told the Corinthians that he had us to think about it. Whatever we are as part of the universal church of Jesus Christ, all of it is good. We're in the place of doing the thing that God would have us be. We're tempered or fashioned together. Look at verse 25. That there should, could be, but should not, and I think he mentions that because he knows there's schisms in the body. As we look at the first couple of chapters past, are going forward from chapter 12, verse chapter 10 and verse 11, and chapter 7, we see a number of things that were dividing the body of Christ in the Corinthian church. And he's saying that these things ought not to be. Don't look at one another and think about your uh, things your and covet the things that God has placed in it, but we need to appreciate the difference in our bodies. I appreciate my wife, praying that she also appreciates me, but we're not the same. I appreciate my children. We're not the same. I appreciate my grandchildren, but we're not the same. But we're all family. That's the way it is in the body. Amen. We've all got something different that we may be done, but uh, God all give us something particular to do that there should be no schism, no division, no separation in the body, that, but that the members should have the same care one for another. You ought to care for me like you care for the person uh, that opens the door. Amen. You ought to care for me like the person who plays the music or that sings the song or that cleans the church or that does anything. Because we're all part of the one body of Christ. And then he said in verse 26, And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Think about this. Uh, when, all, when one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. But when you go home tonight, don't do it here. Don't want all that crime. When you go home tonight, I take your big hammer, set the member of the hand down on the table, and smash it real good. See if the rest of the body don't feel that. Mm -hmm. uh, right. The whole body is going to suffer because of what's going on with the hand. Or the toe, the foot, the leg. Amen. We ought to have that same care for all of us tonight. I'm not going to go home, and I doubt you will, put your ta hand on a table and smash you with a hand. But when one member of the body suffers, we ought to have compassion and try to feel, which compassion means, feel a little bit of their hurt. Yes, when we have compassion one upon another, we identify with what they're going through. Now sometimes that may be a little hard because you've not gone through what they've gone through. But to the best of your ability, you make the effort, being part of the body, to appreciate what that member is going through. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are one body in Christ, but we are members in particular. We're hands, we're feet, we're head, nose, Eyes, mouth, chin, all of these things. And God has set some in the church. Uh, meaning that God has set these things in the church, in the body of the church, in the order that He suits it. Verse 18, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers after the miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, 
government, diversity is of tongues, are all prophets, no, are all, uh, are all prophets, are all prophets, uh, apostles, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Now these are the things that are argued about in chapter 12. These are the things that cause division in chapter 12. But Paul is saying all these things ought to receive the same honor because they're all working to function as the one body of Christ. Amen. Someone said something not too awful long ago, and I think everybody can identify with this, uh, that there is a lot of, of hurt in the church and a lot of people uh, don't get along in the churches. I remind, I can't remember who it was, I think I know who the preacher was, was talking about a little bitty church that he went to a revival in and knew the church quite well, well and I knew it quite well, uh, but he told the story that these uh, folks uh, were in an old fashioned, a little bitty old church and they had some steel beams down right, right down the middle of the church and uh, they kind of held up the, the building as it were in the middle and there was a couple of ladies that got shouting in the church and when they got down toward one another there was a schism in their relationship a division in their relationship they got real quiet until they passed one another then they got carried on again uh, my friend that's just as good as the world would happen to be the devil would like to see every one of us mad at each other that's right you know that's why we need to have more mercy more judgment more faith more forgiveness amen. more kindness amen is anybody in here perfect? I don't know if anybody's perfect. I know that we should strive to be that way. I know that perfection means maturity according to the way that it's written in the Word of God. Perfection means maturity. That means you're trying. Doesn't mean that you're letting down on that trying. That you're making the effort to be what God would have you. What would He have you be perfect? The Apostle Paul in fact said, "Be ye perfect. Be mature." Don't be kids about your walk with God. Don't be a child in your relationship with the Lord. Grow up. One of the things I think we mentioned a while ago are that people talk about divisions in the church, arguments in the church, and these things that people get mad at one another and no longer come to church and do all these things they ought not to be. When you think about that just as good as the devil would have it, it ought to make you get on your knees and pray and seek one another's forgiveness. Because we all fail. From time to time, we all make mistakes. From time to time, we all come short of the glory of God from time to time. Uh, consider that in your home, in your family, the body of your family. Husband and wife don't always agree. The kids don't always agree with one another. But the parents don't always agree with the kids. The kids don't always agree with the parents, but they're one body. And they need to work it out. When we function as the Lord has made us to function, we bring honor to them. When our church is doing what God would have each member to do, we bring honor to the body of Christ. Fashion together as He would have us fashion together. Then He said in verse 31, But covet earnestly the best gifts. The best gifts. Desire to have the best gifts. Look at the rest of that verse. And yet, whatever that best gift is of the Holy Spirit, he mentioned apostles and preaching and teaching and, and miracles and tongues and healing and uh, interpretation of tongues. Yet I show unto you a more excellent way. What is that excellent way, Brother Rick? Well, chapter 13 shouts it out all over the place. It's love. Amen. It's charity. Amen. And charity shows us love, shows us how to act with one another. That we don't get beside ourselves and do things or say things that we later on don't feel bad about and need to apologize for. Amen. Now if you do those things, be man enough or woman enough to apologize. Hello. Yeah. Amen. When you do those things and you hurt somebody's feeling intentionally, Tell them you messed up and you're sorry. Hopefully they won't say, yeah, I know you're sorry. But they'll say, I understand. And I forgive you. What would it be like tonight if Jesus hadn't forgiven us? 
Uh, Ain't one of us here tonight that deserves his death, deserves his suffering, his passion. Not a one of us tonight deserves his cross. That he had to go through all that for us. But yet he was willing to. Go to Ephesians. We're going to close with Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's start reading verse 20. Four verses. Four verses of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ, worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22. And put all things, hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. There is just one leader of the church tonight. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our head. He's the one that knows. As I preached this morning, God knows. He's the one with the brain. We need to function according to His leadership. We need to act and respond, to talk, to walk, to listen, to hear, to go as He leads us to go. He's the head over all things to the church. What is the church? Verse 23. Which is His body. The fullness of Him that filleth all in all. So the church is His body. And it fills Him completely up. God has placed them in the church because He needs the church to function as Christ in this world. That we might be all that He has to be. That we might better see people saved. Amen. I don't like it whenever someone talks and they talk about the church and its division and its trouble. There are some things that we don't agree with other members, denominations, and what have you tonight. Uh, but we uh, should, if they're anywhere near biblical, we should think about and focus on the things we've got that are more in common. What do we got in common, brother? We should be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. We should desire for everybody we know to get saved. Be right with God. And if the church is not working toward that end, they're not part of the body of Christ. Working to see people saved. Because that's why Jesus came. That's why that we got the Bible. The Bible reveals to us the will of God for man which He made and placed above the angels. The honor that God has bestowed upon man not bestowed upon the animals, but bestowed upon mankind. The glory that He placed upon man. Why God has set us above His angels. And they were divinely created by Him and given their responsibilities and duties. God has placed honor upon man far above angels. We were created in His image and in His likeness. Even though sometimes Human beings don't act right. Created in His image and in His likeness. God has given us the ability to be like Him. God help us to be in the body, to be members of the body like He would have us be. As you think about that, so let's stand. The invitation number tonight. God knowing our hearts, where you are. If you've got something you'd like to pray about, He'd love to pray with you. Let Him have His way in your life tonight. What?